I saw a post recently on r slash debate about a unique and in this poster's experience an effective recruiting strategy for their debate club. So I thought I'd make a video to share this strategy, but as I started writing down notes and doing some research, I found that there's a lot of other strategies I could share with you. So this is a more complete video than I originally intended. This is going to be in two sections. First, uh, recruiting strategies to get kids to show up to your club or your class. And second, re uh, retention strategies to keep them around once they show up in the first place. So these strategies, again, come from uh, Reddit. So maybe half of the ideas come from Reddit. Uh, on r slash debate, just digging into this, a lot of good ideas from the community. Not all of these I have tried, but someone's tried them and they seem to have worked for someone at least. And a lot of these come from my own thoughts and experience working as a coach in the private industry for five years at Asian Debate League. The boss of the school, Jesse Chen, is a real master at a lot of these sort of like big picture strategies. So I thought I would share these because we all want to grow our clubs, our classes, and to help the debate community grow and to help more students experience this very, very powerful intervention of debate. We all want our students, our children to be better, smarter, more effective people. And so the more you can recruit, the more you can retain students, I think the better. Now, not all of these strategies will work for every school. Different schools are different in big picture ways, like rich and poor schools. People will have different incentives for coming to debate club. Uh, rural and urban schools, potentially. Different schools have different cultures as well, just individually, whether it's private, public, Christian, etc. And different clubs will have their own unique sort of flavor. The personalities in the club, the personalities of the leadership. So not all of these strategies are going to work for every school and every club. As one Reddit user said, recruitment, quote, isn't a problem when you have tons of tryhard Indian kids in your school. So you may in fact have too many students in your club, in which case this video is probably not for you. The point here, in short, is to pick and choose from this torrent of information I'm going to throw at you, the key strategies that you think would help your individual situation. You don't have to get overwhelmed and use all of these. So we'll start with some general recruiting strategies. First point I want to make is that when you are talking to people about debate or communicating with them about debate, the messaging really matters. You need to know your audience. And this is like I'm talking about different schools having different values, uh, different things that you should emphasize as part of debate. Some of the things you might emphasize are fun. This might be really in talking to students, talking about socialization benefits, really emphasizing that it's like a cool place to hang out where they can be part of a community. There are also social benefits. This can help. I've, uh, again, targeted different students with different things based on what they probably would be, would, would appeal to them. Uh, there are, for example, some shy students who don't particularly want to be shy. People who aren't that good at talking, who maybe would like to be good at talking. Maybe English is not their first language and they, this is an insecurity of theirs. And this is obviously debate is something that can really help. So these social aspects that just making you a better communicator, it's not going to resonate with everyone, but with some people, this can be very powerful. For me, I think it's probably the most important thing for debate. And then, of course, professional benefits. This might be certain schools, certain students, but I think especially certain parents who would value the uh, resume building or college app building aspect of debate. So know who your audience is. So this is from Reddit user Burnt Bagel with one message. Do you want to yell at people? Well, backed with evidence. And be able to put it on your college app? This is one message you might employ. But there are different aspects of debate, different benefits of debate that can be helpful. Just know your audience when you're talking to people. So strategy number one is mass outreach. <laughs> Number zero, not even number one. Mass outreach is number zero because you're probably already doing this. This is something that everyone kind of does. Posters, school announcements, etc. It's probably good to just let people know that Debate Club exists in the first place. It might not be great at actually getting people to show up. Rather, just getting it in people's awareness because everyone does this, right? There's probably a dozen clubs in your school, maybe dozens of clubs in your school, and all of them are doing this. So you're just really competing for attention with 
the basketball club and other cool things. But uh, it doesn't mean you should ignore it. Also, pay attention to your message here. Probably get some cool creative things going on here. Uh, don't be afraid to get wacky. Uh, don't be boring. Don't be boring with your posters. Come on. Uh, next, this is probably the most important takeaway here is individual outreach versus mass outreach. So the first thing is who should you be targeting? First, target smart kids. Smart kids do better debate. Debate is obviously very uh, heady and intellectual. And so uh, higher IQ kids are going to be better at debate. However, this really depends on your goal and your values for the debate club and maybe where you are at at the debate club. You're going to want the smart kids if you just are trying to win tournaments, win trophies. If you're really goal, your goal here is to grow the club generally or to help students generally, which honestly probably most of us really want to do, you are probably going to want to keep your appeal more broad. Nevertheless, you shouldn't, um, you shouldn't ignore this because recruiting really A players for your team, getting trophies, uh, coming away from tournaments with wins can help to build momentum for your team. So even if not everyone wins trophies, if you can say, hey, we won, you know, second place or we, you know, three of our teams broke or something, that's going to feel really good for the team. So don't ignore this. Again, yeah, probably honors AP classes are where you're going to get this. Also, clubs that are debate-like, things where you meet after school and there's certain rules you got to learn, certain formats, there's sort of speaking involved. Uh, model UN, DECA, um, maybe mock trial, something like this. Uh, these are places that you can reach out to do presentations of try to recruit kids into debate club. A quote from another Reddit user. We go to Model UN and DECA kids and ask, do you want to be a beta or an alpha? Most kids quit and join the debate team the next day. So I can personally attest to this messaging being effective. It may be harsh, but it's true. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, next, recruit young. So eighth grade, ideally middle school. If you're already in a middle school team, potentially even elementary school, I know this is something that uh, Asian Debate League does that they even teach elementary classes, which I thought was really, really, really powerful. And of course, it requires tailoring the, st tailoring the strategies. You can't do these big geopolitics topics with, you know, seven-year-olds, but you can do some kind of speech and debate activities with seven-year-olds. So if it's possible at all to even go as young as elementary school, it's better. But we think mostly we're talking about high school clubs here. And so in this case, recruiting like eighth grade would really be the best or you know, second best would be ninth grade, sort of right at the bottom, because they have, these younger students are going to have a longer time to build the skills necessary to get good at debate, first of all. And then they're going to, if they do become good and involved, they're going to be there for years instead of a year or two years. So this is going to build, again, the momentum and the growth of your club. So recruit young. Uh, Reddit user VYO17. One of the best ways to recruit is with the debate program at your middle school. Varsity members, members of my team go to our middle school every week to teach the kids for an hour, and it gets them really excited about high school debate. Our team has gotten much bigger because of this program. So another really key about who you should be reaching out to. I'm talking also here about these classroom presentations. This may not really fit your model of what individual outreach would look like, but it's certainly not the same as posters, right? It's much more individual than just having posters. Okay, so this is who you might target. Uh, next, how to target. Classroom presentations, again, are really good in these different clubs or classes. And this could be really at any school event, a school assembly, or what have you. Remember, pay attention to your message. So if it was like a school assembly where you have like the band going and people dancing and a uh, rock band or something, like don't give a boring presentation, like make it like fit the venue, fit the vibe. Uh, it, it, <laughs> it's easy to be boring. Don't be boring. And yeah, again, messaging matters. Pay attention to what is the class like? What is the vibe like? You can also use teachers as mediators. So this is the uh, anonymous tip that I got from Reddit that kind of spurred me to make this video in the first place. 
This is a way to create an air of exclusivity for your club. You go to teachers, let's say a couple English teachers, and you say, you give them a letter that has like an invite, maybe put the, you know, a, a space for them to fill in the name of a student, something like that, and say, hey, we have this debate club after school, you know, you're invited. And these teachers are going to give it out to, you know, a couple students, maybe like two, three students per class. And in this way, these students would be whoever they think would probably be the best at debate, you know, someone who would really excel at the sport. And these few kids are getting this invitation. They're more likely to go because this is like hyper individual. It's got their name on it. The teacher is coming to them specifically. The teacher knows them specifically. It's not you coming in from outside, whoever you are, the coach, advisor, a uh, different teacher. Like this teacher definitely knows and spends time with this student. So it's, again, quite individual. And then you're going to have however other many uh, students in the class, 15 or 20 or what have you, that aren't getting these invitations. And that's maybe going to stir up a little bit of uh, curiosity, intrigue, and again, exclusivity. Now, that may turn some students off, especially again, if you're going for some kind of general outreach where you want to get more students involved, why are you only targeting a few? So again, this is a strategy that may fit your situation and may not. And again, it's not something I've ever tried. I just thought it seemed so uh, unique and interesting because people obviously want to be in on those more exclusive gatherings. Here is a Reddit user, Scratchlax, again, on individual outreach. This activity can be intimidating, confusing, and scary. And that's before even learning about whatever the policy debaters are doing. The best recruiting pitch you can make isn't, this gets you into college. It's, we want you, and you specifically, to be part of our team. So, big takeaway message from this video, individual outreach. Second, parental involvement. So, parents are going to be the ones supporting their students uh, at debate club, potentially driving them to tournaments, certainly maybe chaperoning tournaments, and the more parental and really family involvement you can get in the student and what they're doing, the better. You know, if everyone's on board, that's, that's much, much better. Parents also know other parents. So this is sort of the network effects that you're going to get from getting parents on board. It's not like the student is just saying, hey, mom, pick me up two hours late or whatever. And, you know, hey, how was, what did you do? Oh, I went to a club. You know, what was it? Uh, debate. What was that like? Cool. You know, it's like, okay, the parent knows what's going on. They're involved in it. Uh, to, you know, at least to some degree, they're on board. So getting parents involved, especially talking to parents, maybe if you do uh, like parent-teacher conferences, maybe bring this up, this could be a, a, a good place to um, talk to parents and get them on board. Third, admin involvement. So just straight up ask the admin for support, whatever support you need individually uh, as a club, ask them for that support. You could ask for some specific things. For example, making the debate club or class part of an English credit or a mandatory speaking credit, something like this, adding more mandatory things to someone's schedule. I, I mean, I can see this really going both ways that you're taking away from students' autonomy and their ability to pick classes that they want to do. Probably all teachers who are really involved in their field think that there is the, is the most important thing. We need to have mandatory art classes. We need to have mandatory math classes, etc. cetera. Uh, so again, take this with a grain of salt. Uh, that may not be, but if, especially if you already have a mandatory credit for something, making debate uh, an acceptable substitute for that. Uh, one really great potential thing you could do is having in-school demos. So this could be a one or two hour, maybe more presentation with your existing club, having a little debate, maybe a mini debate, short one. Maybe not the full, maybe really an adaptive thing so that there's maybe more crossfire, more cross examination, less long, boring speeches, maybe an interesting topic, things that are really well prepared, really well polished, and really fun so that you can show people what debate is like instead of just uh, talking about what it would look like or showing the pictures. Because having a more of an experience, even some audience involvement, having them ask some uh, questions, getting them involved in the debate could be a great part of the demo. So again, target younger students, eighth or ninth grade for this. And having parents show up can also be incredibly helpful. Having some kind of a parent meeting that kind of ties into this demo. So, so the parents are also seeing, having a Q&A session afterwards, this is all 
uh, really good stuff if you can make it happen. So these are some ways to recruit students. How do you keep them in your club once they're there? Retention strategies. Uh, first, the Matthew principle, Pareto distribution, more begets more, the rich get richer, big clubs get bigger, smaller clubs stay small. So a big part of this is that it's just going to be difficult to get started, any club, uh, for the most part. If you have three students who are showing up, it's tough to get to six. But once you're at six, it's way easier to get to nine. Once you're at nine, it's not that hard to get to 12. This is just the network effects of people knowing people, more people getting involved, and assuming that you're doing the right thing and making sure that the clubs are fun, good time, educational, etc. So first thing you can do to keep people there is good planning. Um, make it fun, make it a good time, and plan to make it fun, make it a good time. Lesson planning, I have always run clubs the same way as I'd run any other class, which is I'm really planning out you know, five, 10 minute chunks, like what exactly are we doing here? What skill are we working on? What's the exercise? Where are the students in the room? Where are the desks? What's being written? Who's talking when, etc. cetera. Everything is really planned out really, really well. That's how I like to do classes anyway. There's a flip side to this, which is there's something really cool about just like hanging out with your friends and doing a little bit of this and that. And uh, I don't want to discount all of that. There is certainly... You could, you could make the point that you could be too strict in something that is just an after-school club. Why are you running through them through all these paces, all of these drills being so strict when it's supposed to be a good vibe? So there's some you know pros and cons to this, certainly. Free food, a lot of people have mentioned this. It's not a big draw for me, but it seems to be a big draw for many people, uh, especially if the kids are hungry. It would have been a huge draw for me in high school, actually. Come to, the, come to think of it, I was a big eater in high school. So free food can be big. Uh, some kind of... Like jokes, surprises, things that uh, students don't expect. These are all things you can plan, of course, into your lesson plans, into your club plan. Second culture, this is huge, huge, huge. I don't exactly know how to do this. I've seen it work well. I've seen it work less well. I know that the classes that students stay for six years between middle school and high school, that they invite all their friends, that they just love being there, that's all about culture. That's all about having a real healthy, fun, cool culture where it is just a cool vibe where like everyone just wants to be there. I've, se I've, I've been the, uh, you know, the teacher for clubs where that's the case. I've also been the teacher for clubs where it's absolutely not the case where even like maybe there's a ton of students, but like, you know, pff, you know, things are just kind of like messy. A lot of students don't want to be there. Maybe it's like kind of a, just a recruitment thing. Uh, and so this is something I'm not great at, at differentiating, like, how exactly do you build that culture? There's a lot of techniques, I would say, to, like, tactically manage this or this, you know, a disruptive student or a student who's struggling or mixed levels, etc. But I wouldn't say I'm a master at building culture, but I would say it's incredibly important to make it a cool place for people to hang out. If you know how to do that, do it. Uh, some kind of swag. Someone uh, mentioned having a t-shirt with a, some kind of catchy slogan. For students to wear around the hallways, that could be cool. Third, personal connection. So remember everyone's names. I had a teacher in college. He was a uh, anatomy teacher. We dissected a bunch of animals, and he, at uh, the first day of class, you know, he he had however many hundreds of students in his lectures. He'd take a picture of everyone, go home and study it. And so, you know, around about the second third week he would know most of the students' names. He'd come to and be like, hey, Joel, like, how's it going with blah, 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 blah. And it was hugely, hugely powerful. This one teacher uh, informed my strategy for remembering names for my eight years of teaching, which was, that's what I would do. My first day of any new class, I would take a picture of all the kids. It can be kind of weird. Maybe you're not comfortable. Maybe they're not comfortable. They can always opt out, make a funny face. I don't care. But I don't have a great memory. And if I have 120 students, I'm not going to remember them unless I have a strategy like taking a picture. So I would recommend that to everyone. If you're comfortable and they're comfortable and it makes sense, I know it can be weird. I think it's totally, totally worth it to have a real personal connection, at least the name with uh, every student. So you can also use this for clubs. And personal connections, obviously ask regulars, you know, to bring friends. Don't ask, you know, if someone's like new and just trying it out or like what's going on and they think it's kind of weird. Don't ask them to bring friends, but for the regulars, ask them to bring friends. Fourth, student leadership. This may only be possible for, whoa, 
Okay, at least we got a header, right? This may only be possible for a certain critical mass, like 15 plus students. I don't really know. If you have three students, do you really want like a president and a secretary and a vice president or something? At some point, you can have some student leadership and you will have those normal roles like a president, like a secretary, treasurer. But also people specifically in charge of recruiting students, you can have like a recruiting lead, but also of retaining students, specifically novices. So like a novice coaching, um, you know, a dedicated role for that. This gives students some authority and some ownership and gives takes a lot of the burden off of your plate as well so that you're distributing the load of retention and recruiting to the students who really care about the club and who are there every day and making a big part of their life. Uh, last thing here is tournaments. And I really think this has happened twice in a row. I got to figure something out with these prezies. There is some strange thing going on because these slides, I totally made them. They keep disappearing. <clears throat> last, tournaments. So tournaments make students very involved. They see a bunch of the benefits in learning, right? I think there's only so much practice debating you can do, only so ma many drills you can do. At some point, you've got to go to tournaments and really see what they're like. And you do you tend to have way more learning that happens at tournaments than in you know X number of classes. So encouraging in whatever way to get students to go to tournaments is huge. Perhaps making it mandatory if it's a man if it's a class, you know, at least go to one or two tournaments, something like that. But to students who come back from the tournament are going to be more dedicated. They're going to learn a lot more, and they're going to be they're going to make it a lot bigger part of their identity. This is also really what a lot of debaters look back on as like the fun times, like just being able to hang out with their friends all day at these tournaments. Just kind of like the stress and excitement and novelty of that is can be like a great memory to make. So encourage people to go to tournaments. There's also like a sunk cost uh, aspect here, which is when you put in a lot of time, effort, money, et cetera, on something, you become more dedicated to it. That's just how it is. And I'm not, it's not like a good or bad thing. That's just like basic psychology, right? Uh, so if they have sunk some cost into it, they're going to be more dedicated to the pursuit. Okay, that is what I have for you. I hope you enjoyed. If you have other recruiting or retention strategies to share or questions about what to use in your particular situation, drop a comment below. Maybe I can help. Maybe I can't, but maybe I can. Thank you for your work in nurturing debate and improving the young minds of our country, of our world. You, anyone I think who's really working with students is at least in some small way a hero. You're a good person, and I thank you for doing that. So uh, enjoy. Leave a comment. Adios.